Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number four. This one's a three millimeter carbon plate made with a balanced laminate and a quasi-isotropic fiber orientation. The material is Gurit Prepreg. First off, a balanced laminate is one in which the midplane, also called the neutral axis of the panel, forms a line of symmetry and everything above it is the mirror of everything below it. And so in this case you can see the midplane ply in orange and everything is mirrored about that in terms of ply orientation and weight. And the reason for doing this is to try and get a uniform cure and no built-in pressure or stresses in the laminate that would cause it to warp. The other thing about this is that it has a quasi-isotropic fiber orientation, which means that we're trying to get a material pointing in each direction the same amount. In this case, there's the same weight of material in the 0, 90, plus and minus 45 degree directions. So starting out, cutting the material, this is 300 gram grit prepreg using the safety ruler because I value my fingers and have learned the hard way. Cutting the 45 degree plies, because these are going to be the same width, it's important to make sure that you cut them so that they'll be the same width and that you're measuring in the right orientation. It's easy to mess this up. And um, so I'm checking they'll be laid 45 degrees to each other. I'm pre-cutting this material because this is a 400 millimeter 16 inch square. It's pretty easy to do. So I've got my table coated with Teflon and I've laid out the ply directions. Um, my little clock here with 0, 90 plus and minus 45 degree orientation so that I don't get confused and lay things up in the wrong order. So I'm putting down the ply here. It's a 200 gram twill. Table's a bit cold and it's not all that sticky. So I'm going to debulk down this first ply and try and get it to lay down. I actually have to tape it here so that I can get a debulk on it without crinkling it too badly. Um, and I'll come back and that was a very quick debulk. I actually left it under for a few minutes and hit it with a heat gun. Come back and make sure there's no junk stuck in it. Sometimes the green mesh leaves little chunks of itself stuck in there which need to be removed. So I've got my laminate schedule here. Now I'll lay my first ply which is a negative 45. And here you can see this is a quick and dirty way to cut the plus and minus 45 plies from the 45s cut off the roll. So peel the backer and lay it down. I'm being pretty sloppy about the edge here and really focusing on the joint. What I did there is just tore the piece in half because this has got no stitching. This uni tears nicely, and I'll just be careful to make sure that the joint is as tight as possible without any overlap. It's better to have a little gap than an overlap, but in this case, and here I'm just pointing out how easy it is to get messed up with your 45s, the fiber direction in that way, when you want it that way, uh, by flipping it over. Because I cut these all the same off the roll, I only cut three. They're not handed, but if you were doing this for a larger project, you'd cut them uh, so that you'd always be peeling off the paper backer and leaving the plastic backer on the front. It's just a little easier and you're less likely to make a mess. Here, I'm not making a, a big deal about it. Just trying not to waste any material. So peel that backer off and move on to my second ply, which is going to be, well, my third ply, which is gonna be a 90. And having reached about 900 grams, 
I'm going to give it a debulk. My general rule of thumb, unless I'm doing something fussy, is about a thousand grams for debulk. And so I'll pull that off, and this next ply is a zero. Now we'll go down. And now we've reached the center ply at the neutral axis. And here I am making a mistake, putting down a 0 090 when I should be putting down a plus or minus 45 uh, layer of this 200 gram twill. So my laminate will not be exactly quasi ISO uh, as much as it could have been. There will still all be the right amount of uni pointing in each direction, but I've got it off now by more than I had planned. Because it's a neutral axis, it shouldn't make much difference, but it uh, should have been paying more attention. And now I'll go back and work in the opposite direction, keeping sh all of my plies mirrored about that mid-plane laminate. And this should make the final product nice and uh, flat with less likelihood of warping. As you build thicker plates it becomes more important um, and as there are more potential stresses built up during curing and you also work towards a uh, tighter ratio your, your plies are more evenly distributed and this piece of the surface I'm using a heat gun to put it down to work out all the wrinkles. And now it's time to put on the bag stack. First thing down some dried peel ply. If I had pre preg peel ply that would be nice because it would limit the bleed of resin out into this dry peel ply here. I'm not worrying about it too much. Again the thicker laminate the less the bleed stack is a concern because the fraction that you're bleeding off is reduced. I'm putting some breather and this green mesh around this the perimeter so they won't pull too much resin out but will still distribute vacuum all around. We'll see how much bleed I get. Depends on the cook. And now the bag, because there's no real height to this part, I'm just doing the quickest thing which is putting the tacky tape around the perimeter. Usually I put it on the bag for something this size, but here, I'm by eliminating pleats, I'm just going to have fewer possibilities of having wrinkled bag over the top. I'll let the bag stretch a little, but I'm pretty comfortable that it won't bridge anywhere because there's really nowhere to bridge. Now, this is a pretty nasty piece of bag that I found. I'm a little worried there'll be leaks. So I'm going to fit the fittings, one for the gauge. And one for the vacuum. Come in and check it out, and it's not all that great. So I chase the tacky tape around the edge, make sure everything is pressed down, and see how my vacuum goes. Again, still not great. So I ended up chasing this down and found a leak in the corner. There, it's something that happened to the bag, and so I put a an extra piece of bag over the top of the existing bag and just let the leak suck the new bag patch down. They work pretty well. This is an easy way to do it if you're not sure exactly where your leak is or if there are multiple leaks. Hooked up my dodgy oven. At least now I have a heat sink. And this time I'm logging the thermocouple on the part and in the air and also trying to log vacuum. The vacuum logging was pretty uneventful, but you can see here the initial ramp. The air goes up really quick, and the red is the part. That's the part going up to its first dwell, sort of dwell around 65C, and then ramped up further. I should have ramped this hotter faster, and we'll see in a minute why. But that's the beginning of the cook. The log went nice. Turns out I had a lot of bleed almost completely saturated the breather. This is not great because this resin should ideally remain in the laminate. So I took it off and cut a square of uh, bleeder and peel ply and it turns out I was pulling off 330 grams or so of resin which is an awful lot. 
and so that resin should have been in the laminate but it did come out nice and flat and balanced there were not a lot of stresses built in and it did come out right about exactly three millimeters and the weight 418 grams which was just a little bit more than the 410 grams that our estimate predicted if you look back at the beginning and I'll show that again now um, panel came out nice if I had ramped it quicker and got it to kick uh, before uh, the resin ran so much I would have been better but you can see here the total outcome uh, the weight is about two percent error in the estimate the thickness just under three millimeters probably explained by the excess bleed and I did bleed almost 20 percent of the total resin out into the bleed stack which is kind of crazy so there it is thanks for checking it out